Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 313. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 307 to 315. Hey, in this trick here, we want to see just a few points about array formulas. We want to see what makes an array formula and how an is an array formula different than a regular formula. Now I have a couple of video series. If you scroll up here I always have lots of notes in these downloadable workbooks. There's a series I did on the basics of array formulas and there's another series here. These are links you can click on them or you can search my playlist. This formula efficiency has some great array formulas in it also. Now what is an array formula and how is it different than a regular formula? Let's look at a regular formula first begin stock value and stock value. Let's calculate the difference. Equals one cell to my left minus two cells to my left. This is an operation, subtraction, on two individual cells. Control enter and then I'm going to click and uh, drag it down. Notice when I get down here it's still individual cell minus another individual cell. Now I could calculate, because these are all the differences, I can figure out what is the max. I want to see which stock had the biggest gain? Close parentheses in the control enter. So 44. All right, for regular formula, operation, individual cells. Now let's switch to array formulas. When you have an operation instead of individual cells, you can do ranges. And so that tells you that you're, you're, you've stepped into the realm of array formula. So down here, we're going to do equals max. And instead of individual cells, we say this whole column right here minus this whole other column right here. So now, in close parentheses, that tells you, oh, this is an array. We have an, uh, a range of values or an array, operation, some other range or array. Now when I control enter, oh, it doesn't work. F2 to put it back in edit mode. Point number one. Doing operations on ranges means it's an array. Point number two, in order to enter this in and have Excel understand that this is an array formula, you have to hold Control and Shift and tap Enter. And then it calculates it, the maximum. And you can see up here it's acting on an array. If you go to Formula Evaluator, Formula, Formula, Auditing, a Formula Evaluator, Tools menu in earlier versions, you can watch it calculate, right? So it calculates that entire range and then finds the max. In the cell, you can do your uh, F9 trick. Highlight the um, part of the formula you want to evaluate and hit F9. Sure enough, you can see there also, it went ahead and did all those calculations, but it was on two ranges or arrays. Control Z, escape. Now let's look at, um, so we've seen operation on ranges or arrays. Control Shift Enter. The third thing, the third point I want to make is sometimes you have a function and it is expecting a single value or a, or a cell. If you give it a range, then you're saying, oh, this must be an array formula. Let's do the large. So I have the large function, and actually I'm going to click Escape. I want to name this whole column difference because I'm going to use this column over and over in calculations. Highlight the whole column including the field name at the top, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. Control Shift F3 is create names from selection, and I'm going to say top row. Right now, that means we've just named that. If you highlight the range, you can see there's the name difference in the name box. Control Shift F3. Now, let's click down here and use that range. Equals large. And I'm going to type difference. In 2007, you have the option. You have these uh, drop downs for functions. That little name tag means it's a name. You can double click it. You can also, if you're typing it, you can hit tab. In earlier versions, if you forgot the name, use F3. F3 key gives you the paste name. And then you double click it, and it pastes the name. Comma, and I want the third largest value, which should be 26. Control enter. So if I look up here, there's a 26, 26. Oh, and a 44. So that's the first biggest. That's the second uh, largest or biggest. And 26 would be the third largest. Okay. So this function right here, the K, it was expecting a single value. Now let's um, ch change it a little bit. Let's do equals large. 
and I'm going to do diff. And instead of a single value for K, I'm going to include a range. Now I'm going to highlight these three cells right here. They have the numbers 1, 2, 3. Now what that means is when you tell this function 1, 2, 3 for the K, it means it will extract the first largest, the second largest, and the third largest. Now this kind of formula doesn't make sense right here, but we'll just take a look. Uh, Control Shift Enter. Control Shift Enter entered it as an array, but let's click this and uh, highlight it and hit the Evaluate key F9. You can see that in fact, what it what it did is it went one two three. It got all three values and returned this array right here to this cell. Doesn't it's not going to mean anything in this cell, but watch this. We can use that same formula and highlight three cells equals large difference, and I'm going to highlight that same range with the 1, 2, 3, oops, comma, and for that K that's expecting a single number, we're going to highlight this array, close parentheses, and now I have all three cells highlighted. I hold, I hold Control, Shift, and hit Enter, and now it's allowed to return those three values to three different cells. So the point here is that function was expecting a single value, but when we give it a range, that makes it an array formula. I'm going to click Escape. Let's see how to use that very same thing, but um, adding. I'm going to come down here, equals sum, because remember, uh, well, let's do large. Let's do that same formula inside of sum. Difference, comma, and I'm going to get these same values right here, one, two, three. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Now, if you highlight this part right here, you can see that this part of the formula returns an array. I'm going to hit F9. But see, then the sum will add it. I'm going to Control Z. And now I'm going to uh, just Control Enter. It gives me a value. I'm going to hit F2 to put it back in edit mode and hold Control Shift and Enter. That, you, you've told that sum function now to be entered as an array, and it calculates. Uh, now, uh, two more points. There are a, a, f or a few functions that will accept arrays without using Control Shift Enter. One of them is called the sum product. So watch this. I'm going to scoop this out here, right here, and just copy it. Notice when we hit uh, Enter or Control Enter here, it gave us a value, but when we Control Shift Enter, it worked. Well, the sum product will do the same thing, but you don't have to use Control Shift Enter. So equals sum. Actually, edit mode F2, control V. Oh, I guess I did need that <laughs> equals sum product. So I need the sum product around that. So all I did was I replaced sum po the, the sum function used to be there, and I put the sum product. Now when I hit Enter or Control Enter, it calculates without Control Shift Enter. That's one of the few functions. Lookup is another one that can deal with arrays like this without Control Shift Enter. All right, um, that's a few points about array formulas. Remember, operation, right? So there's an operation um, with ranges. That makes it an array formula. Control, Shift, Enter. And then sometimes you have actual functions that are expecting a single value. You put it in an array, and that makes it an array formula also. All right, we'll see you next trick.